What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Fit Business. I'm Matt White, Jimmy Mentis. Hello, hello. Dude, we got a lot to talk about today. How's are the, the pick coming along? Let's start off we, with that. I can see all these pictures. What? The pit? Yeah. Oh, it's killing me. The, 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 the whole vibe, the whole thing, man. You know, and I take that PV7, I'm getting my six, seven meals in a day. Man, it just takes me back. I'll, but, I'll you tell know. you what, and and I don't want to talk about you know our products, our services, our businesses, and stuff like that on on the podcast. But when you sent me the PV7, I'm like, all right, it's it's just another pre workout. That's what everybody out. says. And and it's funny because my adrenals are just shot. So the stuff that's it's you know slammed with stims, I, I don't feel anything. And in fact, I think it inhibits the pump that I get because of you know, the, the vasoconstriction right. properties of, of caffeine itself. I took the PB7 and and <laughs> I told you this, I was like a set into it after I warmed up and I, I'm like, I'm just getting full. Yeah. I'm like, what is going on here? And I sent you a text. I'm like, what, what, what is going on here? Like, I have no idea. And you're like, just stop texting me and just. Yeah. What I just, well. what I keep going. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because you just gotta if you keep going, keep going, you're like, oh my god, what is this? What's going on? You're like, I'm don't think about that. it, just go do. Yeah. It's, it's legit. I like it. I like and it a that's, lot. And that's um that's the only way I'm gonna tell people. I, I don't wanna sit and explain it because if I sit and explain it, it's actually gonna sound like the same old pitch like everybody else's. All I'm gonna say and all I'm gonna do is say, just take it. Just take it. You you'll figure it out. Just take it. You know? and, I mean, word word of mouth is going to help move it all by itself. Yeah. I mean, once somebody takes it and they feel it, they experience it, well, I, I think it's going to spread. Technically, it's been around for 10 years. It's got it most has people three, don't know. three labels. It had three labels, three different phases. But most people didn't know about oh, it. Oh, yeah. So that was, that was the problem. You kind of kept it under wraps to yourself. Right. You know, for, for the most part. But what it's it's going to be available in the next few weeks. Uh, it's in packaging right now. Okay. It's in packaging. They they shipped a, a couple of pallets on on one flavor. They're doing the other flavors now and stuff. But um, I just can't wait because I'm just going to blow it out. Do a sale, blow it out. I want everybody to try. I want everybody to experience it. Yeah, it's good stuff. I like it a lot, and it kind of ties in with you know the topic that we're going to talk about today, which is. Supplement marketing, you know, things that have worked in the past, things that we're doing now, maybe things that we're going to see down the road. Uh, but it kind of piggybacks off of our last episode from last week, talking about all of these supplement companies that are, you know, just popping up out of the woodwork. And then we started talking about samples and expos and, you know, having a visual on your brand and your products and trial and stuff like that, which kind of brought up this topic. So I, I wanted to write it down so we could talk about it in this episode. So with that being said, I mean, obviously everyone markets their product technically differently or they try to differentiate or they, they at least should from the other brands that are in the market. But what are you seeing now that people are really failing at from a marketing standpoint to try and get their, their business, their brand, their products out there to, to get eyeballs and trial on their products? Well, the the one the one thing I see all constantly is the, the everybody wants to go through influencers because that's the way to to get your product out there, and they're finding influencers that really don't have any credibility. Um, and I think that's the first mistake many are having. If someone has a an amazing product, put it in the consumer's hand. Don't be scared. Put it in the consumer's hand. It's like when you want to buy a, a, a piece of clothing, right? A shirt or a pair of pants. Got to try it on. Got to try it on. See how it looks, right? So I believe that uh, I encourage people to try the products before they actually want to invest in the long term. Now, the sample thing, the sample thing is, is something that, I'm with and against at the same time. So I, that's to me, I'm, I'm I'm on the fence for that. Okay, because many 
uh, many people want sample, sample, samples. But again, with one, if the product is a faith-based product, right, you have to believe in the product and you have to believe that it's working compared to a uh, feel-based product, okay? So when you have a feel-based product, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel the energy or the taste or something like that. So I recommend to buy the product, literally buy the product. And if the, if the company has a money-back guarantee, then send it back. Yeah. Send it back. Uh, you used to work for GNC, right? No? No. Well, I used to work for GNC. And I remember, I, they probably still do. Now everybody has it. That you can use, there's, a, let's say, 120 capsules in a, in a bottle, right? You can use 119 capsules. And bring one capsule back in the bottle, and you get a full refund. Really? Yes, yes. Those are the days that they had Super Tuesday. So, uh, so I recommend, I recommend, you know, these these little samples, and and remind me to, to expand on the samples of the companies um, because I got a lot on my mind. Plus, I'm I've been so tired from training; <laughs> it's been crazy. <laughs> um, the Buy the whole product, use the product, and then if you don't like it, then return it. And I'm pretty sure every company out there will give you a full refund or maybe, you know, refund your product without minus the shipping. Um, Beauty Fit, we we send everything, you know, we, we do a full refund, but we don't have any refunds. We don't have any returns. Um, That's great. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy because every time I sit with with the the accountant controller, they're like, "Okay, what are our returns for the quarter?" And I'm like, um, three. <laughs> 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 you know, and I'm like, "She's like, what?" I'm like, "Yeah, three. And they didn't they didn't like the flavor, or they ordered the wrong flavor, and we sent we sent them a different one. Now, going back to the samples, I don't know about it now, but I did know back then that. That there are companies that some of the samples were a lot stronger than the regular product. All right, the, the samples were spiked, uh, like the end of the pre workouts that were spiked, and they would feel it. But then when it came down to the regular product, it wasn't the regular, the real product. Basically, what was in the packet wasn't in the product. Okay. So I recommend everybody out there to buy the product, buy it, literally use it, because now you're you're vested in it, right? Right. So <clears throat> here's here's my take on the samples. It's it's a double-edged sword in the sense of depending on how you market and utilize the samples, they're going to be abused. And what I mean by that is. Last episode, we talked about the Arnold and the Olympia and getting a booth and, you know, yep. being there and being visible with your consumers and gaining trial on new products and all, all of this. My issue is with stuff like that, you're going to spend six figures worth of samples to be giving out to everyone that walks by. Some will take multiple. Some will do the old open open the bag trick and just <laughs> yeah. really just wipe you up. It's the type of stuff that literally it, it pissed me off. I hated doing those shows because oh. while I appreciate the feedback and the response and the engagement and the love for a brand, you get the mooches that literally just want every product under the sun. They're going to take all the samples. They're going to use them because they're too cheap to go out and buy a product. They don't care what it is. Or they go on eBay and they start selling the stuff, which you're kind of like, okay, I bought this product to give it to you for free. And then you're going to profit off of my generosity by selling the product right. to somebody else. So that used to piss me off. But the fact of the matter is when, when you do stuff like the Arnold and the Olympia, and this isn't always the case, but more times than not. It's always the case. It, it's <laughs> a user is going to take the package, open it dump it in because it's a pre-workout, drink it, throw the packaging away, and then tomorrow they have no idea what the hell they right. just took. Man, yeah. I got a great workout from this. Uh, what was it? Shoot, mm -hmm. I shouldn't have threw that packaging away at the gym. Now they have no idea. So the sample that you just gave away means absolutely nothing other than the fact that 
it works, but they'll never buy it because they can't remember what it is. Flip side, just the just the inverse of what happens. Buy it, they try it, here's the packaging. I like this product, I'm gonna go buy it. So it's a double-edged sword. I think it's a necessary evil. I think it's extremely helpful for people to, or brands rather, to utilize samples to either give to retailers so that, you know, when somebody's checking out, hey, you're buying this pre-workout. We just got some samples of this pre-workout. You know, take it along with you, try it. You can compare the two, see whichever you like better. We stock both here at, you know, XYZ Supplement Store. You know, let us know which one you like, which you prefer. Um, so I think that's extremely valuable to a brand. Um, the, you know, even brands that have free samples on their website, you know, Hey, fill out, give us your information. We'll send you a free sample, whether they make you pay for shipping, you know, dollar 99, two ninety nine, whatever it is for shipping, or they send it out for free. I think it is helpful. You were going to say something, you know, where I see the samples really working for me, where? um, believe it or not on the beauty bomb. Now one packet is not, is not going to resolve any issue of correct beauty. it's not i mean you the beauty bomb we know the studies you have to take it for you know within two weeks okay it's the feeling of the lotion it's the smell of the lotion it's how how they should what they what to expect of the beauty bomb and i wasn't a fan of it in the beginning I wasn't a fan of it, um, and I can say now our marketing is ba our beauty bomb marketing is based on the the beauty bomb travel packets. We do hmm. over a hundred thousand, yeah, over a hundred thousand uh, travel packets for each cent, and they're gone within ninety days. That's the wow. only marketing, and that really works. Now again, there's there's other marketing, you know, but sample is a good way to go. I believe samples, travel packets, you know, if you want to give them a value, right, is the way to go if you have. Now, I do I do know that many companies uh, used to do uh, protein uh, samples, packets. Yeah. That's freaking expensive. I never did that. Oh, I exactly. never did that. Never, never did that because protein is very expensive to begin with, right? So... You know, for the for me to do packets of samples, it's going to cost me a buck fifty to two dollars. That's it's it's very expensive. I rather them buy the two pounder, try it, and if they don't like it, you know, then they'll send it back. But because I know they're going to love it, I hedge. I hedge on that. So, right. you know, the other part of marketing, I don't know, man. I'm not I'm not a fan of of a lot of uh, different marketing strategies. You know, I, I I'm not I, th this whole Facebook uh, funnel thing. You know, yeah, we do it too. But um, this clickbait. I'm here about this clickbait and this retargeting. See, we don't do that. We don't throw we don't throw stuff out there. Like it's crazy just to click on it, and then when they go to your website, you got you know you got their uh, whatever they're calling, and then you can follow them around, right? Right. Um, that's been that's going on a lot. Um, more, we talked about this earlier. Um, more companies are going to influencers um, and people who actually have podcasts and people who actually. Um, I'm going to say it, think they're relevant. You know, um, I don't know. Uh, like, I don't know who these people are. I've never heard of them. And they're out there saying that they are experts and they're going to give the real breakdown of the product. And, and, you know, I will let you know how I feel about this product. And it's been going around. There's a lot of people out there. There's a lot of, I don't know, I, I don't really want to call them, you know. And I'm not trying to, and I'm not trying to hate on them, but I'm confused. I'm. Conf I think what it comes down to is those people are really bloggers. They're not experts. They're just there to give their opinion on a product, but they don't have the knowledge or the background 
to, I guess you could say they could speak intelligently if they can read the profile and understand it. But I mean, the bottom line is a lot of them are just bloggers, you know, yeah, calling I, themselves I, experts. I think, and I think the way they're doing it, I think the way they're doing it, um, the format is amazing. It's not like the regular blogging thing or whatever, you know, they're, they're, they're presenting themselves as experts. Like this, like whatever I say, you know, hey, I just got this product in. I'm going to do a review. Check back with me later, you know, and and I'm OK with that. But when you start ripping on companies, good, bad or indifferent, I'm not OK with that because who are you? Who are you to rip on companies when you don't have the history right you know have has, has has anybody of these people actually worked in a manufacturing plant you know sourced out ingredients know knows how a, a certificate of analysis is built what is gmp certification you know see what i'm saying what is what are the wada uh, uh rules and qualifications uh, you know, all these qualifications, people have to understand what it takes to make a product, a, leg a legit product. Now, when someone turns around and says, hey, you know what? I can tell, I can tell by this label, this product is shit. Who the fuck are you? Yeah. I have a problem with that. And that's not marketing to me. That's not marketing to me. I, you know, Matt, I'm, I'm going to back off but I'm because I get very annoyed with this because I have a very, very strong opinion. Um, but I've been in the business for 35 years. Have you ever, ever, really, have you ever heard me talk about another product? You mean in, in a negative light or, or another product in, in general? In, in basically, in a negative or even 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 throw my 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 opinion or my expertise or my history of knowledge or experience on anybody. No, and it's ac actually, it's funny that you say that because when I tried the PV7 that you sent me, I compared it to another product and you didn't even say anything about the product that I compared it to. You just said, interesting. Um, but yeah, now that I think about it, I don't hear you talk publicly or privately. I no. mean, obviously I'm not a fly on the wall and hear all of your conversations, but I've never heard of you talk about another product. Um, I've heard you talk about some products that, you know, some of your customers were saying, hey, you know, they like this product or that product, but it, it's never something that you just kind of bring up and give your two cents on out of the blue. Right. Because that, what does, what do I have to offer to this brand? It's just my personal opinion. If I like right. it or I don't like it. But then again, I'm nobody. I could, when I when it comes down to me talking about a product, I don't talk about it because I don't know what's behind it. I think brands who want to go the route of working with influencers or experts in the industry. I think they need to do their due diligence and their homework and find these people who have some type of knowledge and background that is going to help elevate their brand. I think when you find these people that are popping up everywhere who want to do reviews, look, if, if you send them a product, they're going to say your product is the greatest anyways because you're sending it to them for free. Right. So it's, it's tough to take what they say – as as being gospel and 100 percent truthful because you know deep down and it's the same thing with influencers we talked about this i can't even remember how many episodes ago um where we said you know they're constantly getting products and with the paycheck hey here's this lotion go put it on your instagram here's a thousand dollar check right hope to, hope to see you in another month um so i think you know, that's getting played out. I think people are, while they're still buying from influencers and bloggers and experts, I think brands are 
trying to look for different ways because they see that it's getting so saturated now. And that if you see one person talking about this pre-workout and then that pre-workout and then this protein and then that fat burner and this and that, and you know, while they could very well be um, honest with what they're saying, when you see it so many times, you kind of have to worry that they're being a little sketchy with, with what they're saying. Um, and again, that's not to say that everybody's like that, but it's just the nature of the industry these days where people only want to say good things about products. Um, I mean, I have people who send me products. Heck, I have people who sent me products when I was working with Metrex, and they said, we just want your feedback. And and I would give them honest feedback. Yeah, this product is great. No, this product is bad. The, the taste on this is terrible. And I mean, us being in the industry for so long, us saying something tastes good for a mainstream individual, they're, they're probably going to be like, this is God awful. Why would you drink this? Right. Uh, but I mean, with today's flavor systems and, and the different profiles out there, everything should be tasting fairly decent these days. There's no excuse to you know come out with a product that doesn't taste great. Right. And I think I that's where the samples come into play because if you can gain trial and, and even if it's a product that is not a feel good type of product, a pre workout, a, a nootropic, whatever, a fat burner, whatever the case may be. If it's a powder that has a flavor, if they taste it and they can taste the flavor and they're like, wow, I like this, they're going to be more willing to buy it. So, you know, that's also another plus to the sample side of, of the marketing that we spoke of earlier. But for me, I really feel like if brands aren't doubling down on social media, and creating a community, they're wrong, 100% wrong. And again, this is my opinion, but when you have a free platform, you can go out and build a community and get thousands and thousands, if not millions of people to engage with your brand on a daily basis, or at least have eyeballs or awareness on your brand. That's extremely powerful. You put a launch out there, you put a promotion out there, a sale, uh, you talk about certain ingredients and this kind of goes into play with, with content. And yes, I'm kind of tooting my own horn since that's what I do, but I see it firsthand with brands that you need to be educating people. And that's part of marketing. Like you can put all the hyped out marketing and I'm not going to name the names, but you and I talked about them, um, yesterday when I was building the thumbnail for this, for this podcast and, and, you know, it's, 1500% more anabolic off of the first dose than competitors or this, that it, it's all like smoke and mirrors. It used to be BS back in the day and people weren't getting sued. Nowadays you use the word will on a label and you're going to get sued right, <laughs> because, right. because they expect it if it says will. So things are changing, but you know, marketing is also changing. It's evolving. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's under the microscope now, so to speak, where, Everything that you say, do, and show is being dissected. And personally, I think that's good from a consumer standpoint because it, it almost forces brands to be truthful and legitimate with what they're saying, what they're claiming, the products that they're putting out versus, you know, 10 years ago where this product is touted to be, you know, the best thing since sliced bread, but 15 minutes after you take it, you're running like it's a colon blow product right. and, and nobody says anything different. So you know, I, I think there's different strategies that people can utilize. And I don't think that there's just one specific strategy that is no, going to no. work for everybody across the board. It's one of those, you know, give and take trial and error. You know, you do, you know, this month or we do two simultaneously, see which one does better. I agree with you. I agree. You got to be the marketing has to be on multiple platforms, from your from social media to shaking hands to, with people um, to uh, I, if influencers. I, I'm going to call it word of mouth. How's that? You know the word the word. I think the word influencers really bothers me. Um, word of mouth. Okay, because it, you know you could be just a little customer that buys. A pre-workout every month and then next thing you know they get a new training partner and they're talking about their pre-workout you know that's word of mouth 
And I believe, I truly believe, a brand should grow from the ground up like that. Because and you said something. You said something that that kind of struck a nerve with me that companies aren't doing these days, and it deals with presence. Now, you know, back when I was working for a supplement company, I always told the you know C-suite executives, the marketing team, um, anybody who is in you know some type of executive position within the company that look, you need to go out and shake hands with yeah. your consumers because nobody is doing that. If you show them that you care about them, they're going to look at the brand differently. Even going into retailers, I kept telling the marketing team this all the time. Guys, I'm going into the retailers, <clears throat> excuse me, all the time. Dude, they, they see my face all the time. It's just a friendly conversation. They don't think anything of it. With an executive or the director of marketing, hey, Mr. Retailer, you know, you, you guys are killing it with our products. You know, what feedback do you have of things that we can even improve on? What right. can we do to better service you guys? That goes a long way. The handshake, we're, we're losing that personal touch because everything is, is based off of this these days. I can, I can pick up the phone. I can email you. I can text you. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm just as bad. I text everyone. You know, I email everyone because I'm so scatterbrained. I'm working on this. I'm working on that. And, and that's a terrible excuse. But the fact of the matter is technology is changing the marketing behaviors and how the consumers engage with brands. And, and while some things could be trending from a technological standpoint, that personal touch really means something. Uh, a handwritten note from somebody within the company. I remember a few years ago, I got a handwritten note from bodybuilding.com. Hey, Matt, I just want to say thank you. You've been writing for us for 10 plus years. You, we get a ton of views on your content. We just really appreciated you and we wanted to let you know. Right. Thanks for all your support. And then they sign their name. To this day, I still have that. Most people would be like, oh, okay, cool, thanks. Like right. like a like a birthday card. Right. Oh, hey, that's a really cool birthday card. Thanks. And then they throw it away. Right. But it's it's the personal touch these days that I think can differentiate brands. Now I'm not saying you gotta fly all over the world, but you know, if you have key, you know, A accounts. Make sure you reach out and touch those people, even if it's a phone call to start, and then maybe you work your way in to actually walking through the door and shaking hands with that person. That's that's going to say something in the long run. You know, when um when I started Beauty Fit, I made the biggest mistake ever. I hid behind Beauty Fit. I didn't think women would want anything to do with me. Right? Think about it. Here you got. I, here, I can see that absolutely. Here you got. Here you got a big ass bodybuilder. All right, um, owning and building a women's brand. Now, seventy percent of our customers are the regular soccer moms out there who have the kids and who run rapid. Are really the true heroes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So how I'm saying to myself. How am I going to connect with these women? They're going to see me. They're like, uh, I'm intimidating, right? So for two years, man, I had, I built this team of women, of girls, you know, and we were doing phenomenal. And I showed up at a show. And I was like, wow. And then I realized that was my biggest mistake is hiding behind the logo and then I, I said to myself you know what jimmy's got to come out and be himself and communicate with with it with his customers and when i did that man within i mean the following year our our whole company was totally at a whole different place do you know sometimes when the phone rings here and, and everybody's busy and stuff. And I pick up the phone and I'm like, you know, beauty fit. And all of a sudden I hear, yeah, I ordered yesterday and I still didn't get my tracking number. <laughs> I'm like, okay, what's your order number? And she's like, and like oh, blah, 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 blah. She gives the, the order number and I look it up and I'm like, uh, you ordered at 1130 yesterday. It should go out today, <laughs> right? 
Uh, she goes, oh, by the way, you know, I really love this. And is there somebody I can talk to? to I tell them how much you know, I love the products and how much you've changed my life. I said, yeah, you can talk to me. She goes, and and, and who are you, sir? <laughs> and you uh, are? And, yeah, yeah. And I said, I, I, I'm actually the owner. She goes, oh, you're Jimmy the bodybuilder? <laughs> I swear to God. And I was like, yeah. She goes, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You answer phones? <laughs> I'm like, girl, 10 minutes ago, I was cleaning the toilet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, oh, I have a great marketing idea for you. It, you turn it into a commercial. Go out, rent a minivan, slam it with like six kids that are throwing soccer balls in the back, screaming, yelling, driving you nuts. Have you just driving there and then just have you look at the camera and be like, I might not be a woman. But I exactly feel your pain. <laughs> I can help you get through it, and then have you know beauty fit. <laughs> I, I love it. That's smart, man. I love it. Have you wear a wig or something too? <laughs> so you have long hair. But it's but it's amazing how I made that mistake because I didn't think, you know, and I'm a people person, you know, I I, I, I can be an ass, you know, but I can I can be an ass, but I I connect. I, I love talking to people and stuff like that, especially when they tell me good shit about my products, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I just love, loves like, like yesterday we had, um, one of our customers, she's in club beauty fit, Megan, she's from Boston, from Massachusetts. She came down to Miami for a spinning convention. Right. And she's, she's messaging me. She goes, I, I want to come and see you. I want to come and see you. I want to come and see beauty fit. And I want to come and look at, see the pit. Right. I'm like, come on. She goes, really? I'm like, yeah, come on. So, you know, we have this. Like, if you're in town and you're a customer of Beauty Fit, you can come and see us. And she came. She came and we talked. We had a good time. I took over to the pit. She goes, can you show me two, three exercises I need? You know, I've been wanting to, you know, pick your brain. She came with a notebook and everything. And, you know, I took her over to the pit. She saw it. Then I showed her two, three exercises. She goes, oh. Oh, like she felt it right away, right? And then we came back here and we have a thing because then she went in the back of the warehouse with Tammy and we call it the girls go shopping. So they get a box and they pick whatever they want on me and they leave, you know? But again, it's that I realized that I had to, I had to leave that whole, I'm the owner you know, just forget. Well, I never treated myself as a CEO. You know, who are the, you know, what are you CEO of? You know, it's I'm just a regular guy, normal guy. But I had to forget about what do these women want with me? You know, so when I came out on the other side with, you know, with who I am and my experience of the past and stuff like that, it was very easy for me and the company. Very so I, I encourage that. You know also who does that too? Uh, Mark Glazier from um, Nutribio. He yeah. comes out. Um, what's his face? Um, from Tiger. From um, Mark Lobliner. Yes, he's he's out. He's out and about on his own brand. You know, I like that. I, I encourage that because these guys are just a plethora of information. So why would you suppress that? Come out, talk about your brand, talk about your products. You know, you those to me, those are the true influencers. You know, not some people who just lost some weight and all of a sudden say they are so and so. Right. So let's do this. Let's end on this. Give me your number one choice. If you choose one thing that you feel the majority of people would benefit from in, in regards to marketing. Yeah. What would you recommend that they focus on? Um, and budget is not an option. Yeah, let's let's toss budget out the window. I would offer to first time customers a fifty percent off. Okay. For for me, I think it's building and educating your community because you can get anyone to come off of the street to gain trial but when you can build a community and and be almost an authority 
in the space, not only will you keep those consumers because they want to feel part of something, but they're going to go tell everybody else as well. I'm going to disagree with you. I'll tell you why. Okay. Because if you're proct as shit, you ain't building that community. See, my thing is I would give them 50% off on their first order because I know they're going to like my product. Now I know I got their attention. Now I know with them I'm going to build the community. That's true. But but because how am, I gonna also- build, how am I going to build a community on what? On my on on knowledge, knowledge on what? On 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 product, on my product, on someone else's product. The whole the whole focus here is sales. Like it or not. Right? Correct. I I look at it as the old bodybuilding.com model where I'm going to bring you to the site. I'm going to educate you. Have you understand why you need certain things back end? Oh, by the way, we have this, but with, with the discount structure, while it works, it also programs people to expect. Yeah, but here's the thing. The old bodybuilding.com structure was a forum. Mm -hmm. So people, people interacted. And then they went into the content side. Right. People interacted. Plus, you got 5,000 products to pick from. Right. So so there, when you have one brand, one brand, multiple products, okay, they have to believe in the product. They have to understand. They have to, you're right, understand the product. They have to like something from the brand. You, you know, we have 87 products, right? Even if they like one product, I can still build a community around what a person who likes the one product if they don't like any products i'm building a community for what for information so they can go somewhere else and buy the and buy the product so so what i want what i do and just like we have club beauty fit right we have over 700 women in club beauty fit we've built that community around women who are already customers so when I built that community, first of all, I'm the only I'm the only guy in there. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the only guy in there. So so when we built that community, we built it around women who already like, trust, and recommend beauty fit products. Could be you one. Don't think, but you don't think the community members aren't out there talking and say, "Man, I was on with." Uh, coffee with the boss man last night and this and that and and they're out selling your yes. brand because yes. of the being the community right but the thing is i built i they got the product first then i built a community see what you said is build build you inform them give them information right and I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying it. it it's just, I, to me, I don't think it, it would work like that. You build the, you build, you give them information. It's like free information. That's fine. You get free information. But the thing is, at some point, they got to pull the trigger. They're going to buy the product, right? So I cut through all that bullshit. Just like, just like I sent you the PV7, right? I cut through all that bullshit. Here's the product, fifty percent off. You can't say no to it. You can't say but no. They to also it. say that it, it takes seven touches from a brand to actually get a first sale we have three most people when they're is it, it's it's three no it's seven beauty fit we've seen it through all our our um analytics it's we're averaging three so how how are you touching your prospects through our posts through our funnels um through our content, you know, thanks to you as well, you know, so, so you see them, they come, they come through, you know, the Google, they go to the website, they look at products and then they leave because they're not comfortable yet. Okay. So even if I gave them information, they're gone. But once they try the product, one, they, once they actually have used the product, then they come and they stay. Then they come into Club Beauty Fit. I, I see it because when when women request to come into Club Beauty Fit, I search them in the Shopify. I, I can tell like in the last 10 days they were customers. It's amazing. You know? 
um, we we have some we have some stragglers in there that that come in and hang out and and spy. Um, for example, you know, I do coffee with the boss man. I go live. Right. Uh, someone actually recorded coffee with the boss man through their phone and posted it somewhere else, um, in another private group. <laughs> Did you say thank you? I I, I was pissed. <laughs> I was pissed. I was so pissed. I, I was actually going to like, like I didn't do coffee with the boss man for like three, three, four weeks. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I felt, See, vi- I, I, I felt violated, man. I would have been, I would have been pissed that they recorded it, but at the same time I would have been like, okay, this person just got me in, in front of a whole new audience yeah. that might not know who I yeah. am. So I see it both ways. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure Matt they didn't know who I was. <laughs> <laughs> but I was. I felt violated, man, because <laughs> I I put and when I do coffee with the boss, man, um, I I really allow myself to be very vulnerable. Like I do it from the house, um, like my living room. I've done it by the pool outside. I've done it in the pit. You know, and I just talk to these girls. I mean, they're like, they're like my sisters and they ask questions and I, I talk about different topics throughout the thing. You know, um, I, 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 uh, I get on them, you know, I, I, I get on them. I get on them for slacking. I get on them, you know, but again, it's, there's no holding back on each side. And I've put myself in a vulnerable position and I felt violated when someone recorded it for some reason. That's so. understandable. I was like I'm in a dressing room and I was changing my pants and someone recorded me, you know. That's awkward. <laughs> so I think we'll end on that that note. The dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> Things got weird really fast. <laughs> <laughs> but what in all seriousness, do you have anything else that that you want to touch on for you know marketing and supplement companies? I just I just think the supplement companies really just need to relax. Don't think too hard, okay? Don't think too hard. You yourself are a consumer. The owners, the managers, the the sales reps. You yourselves are a consumer. What makes you buy a product? What makes you feel warm and fuzzy about a brand? Just do that. There's no, there's, there's, you don't have to think anything above or beyond. Connect and connect in the most simplest way with the most simplest and, and play school edition language. How's that? Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing is you need to connect with, with your consumer. Right. If you can't, you know, talk to them in, in a manner that is going to get them excited based off of their wants and needs they're not going to engage with with your brand at all. They're not going to try your products. You're not going to make sales. You're just not going to be successful. Right. So with that being said, you know, I hope you guys got some value out of this. You got some ideas. Maybe you're trying something. You got an idea from us. Maybe it's, maybe you've never done samples before and you're like, okay, maybe I'm going to spend the money and see how this goes. Or, okay, I didn't think about AB testing two different types of marketing strategies to see which one works better for this product or that product or Maybe you're doing a launch and you have two different ways that you're going to market it and see after the first three days, which one is producing more sales. You cut off the other one. You go full bore on on the one that's being successful. Marketing is a very trial-based thing. It's always a trial. What what works for you may not work for me, vice versa. Um, I mean, what's working for, for Mark and Nutribio might not work for, you know, whatever other supplement company that you want to throw out there. So it's, it's very personalized, personalized and individualized to your own brand, who you're marketing towards, your demographic, and, and how you're coming across. So with that being said, um, hey. you guys are blowing – go ahead. I also, and I, I, I had made a note here to not to forget. Um, I also want from you and I our condolences to the family of Matt Porter. Yes. It's tough. And um, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Yeah, the news so, was very Yeah, was so we want, we want to, you know, give our condolences to the families and the wifey and the new baby and um, our prayers are with you. For sure. For sure. 
Uh, with that being said, you know, thank you guys for tuning in. We appreciate the attention. Obviously, you could put your attention anywhere, you know, over the last 45 minutes, if you made it that that far with us. <laughs> um, but but we truly appreciate it. We love the feedback. So if you guys are over on Facebook, Fit Business Official is our page over there. You're more than welcome to to join. You just click to, to be uh, a member, and then we just approve you because we haven't turned anyone away Um, because we just want more feedback. But with that being said, you can find us obviously on YouTube if you're watching this. We're on Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify. So if you're into the podcast game, that's where you can find us. Uh, But with that being said, I've got nothing else. I just hope that you guys got something from this. Jimmy, you got anything else? Peace. See you guys.